Jordan was standing in between the people of God and the promised land. I'm sure many of them must have thought, God, why have you brought us from Egypt all the way to this place so that we can get drowned and die? There may be many people who must have thought, God, why again, you know, defeat? We have won so many battles, but we have come here and we will get defeated. You know, we will get drowned and we will die. What about you saved us? You have done so much good in our lives. But look here, there is a river that we cannot cross. Many a times, friends, when God tells us to go to our promised land, when God says that I'm going to give you a plentiful harvest, there is always a doubt in our minds when we see difficulties that comes and knocks at the door. When the difficulties come and stand in front of you and say, I'm not going to allow you to cross your Jordan, this Jordan. You know, always remember, church, that nothing can stop you because God is on your side. Hallelujah. God is on your side. There are many times you may say, Lord, it's not, I don't think I can go. I don't think I can have a breakthrough in this situation. But God is saying, you can. With me, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough comes from God and not from man. And here the children of Israel are standing, thinking maybe we are, we are going to be defeated again. But God says, no, I'm going to give you victory. He says to Joshua, you, and take all these people and get up, arise, and go. Stop crying. Now no more crying because I'm going to do something new in your life. Today is a challenge for each and every one of us that we have our promised land waiting for us. That's the bountiful harvest that God kept, has kept for us. And we have to move. We cannot sit in one place and say, God, I want to receive that bountiful harvest. If Joshua and the people of God would sit on the other side of Jordan and would cry and wait there saying, God, you open the uh, Jordan so that we can walk, it would have never happened. God wanted them to arise and move ahead and do something and God would do miracle in their life. Listen, church, God says to each and every one of us today that we need to move ahead. I'm going to do something new in your life. When trouble comes around, rejoice. Why? Because there is an opportunity for God to make a miracle. Hallelujah. There is an opportunity for God to do something in your life. When difficulties come, don't get panicked. Don't get worried. Just believe and thank God. God, I thank you that these difficulties are coming in my life because you are going to make a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There might be problems in our lives. We may think that, God, I don't know where I'm going, what is happening in my life. But listen, God is saying, don't worry. I am with you. You will have the promised land that I have kept for you. Don't fret out. Don't freak out. Be calm. Listen to what God is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, don't freak out? Just be cool. You know, we should not freak out. I have seen a lot of people when they have problems, you know, they get freaked out. They will come and say, no, no, it is not going to happen. Nothing is happening in my life. But I will tell you, just depend on God. Look to God. Joshua did not freak out. He said, yes, God, I'm going to listen to you. We find that, you know, before God gives victory to Jordan, there were certain things that Joshua had to do. Before God could take him through Jordan, God said something to Joshua and the children of Israel to do. And they had to do those things so that they can receive the bountiful harvest in their life. The first thing that you and I should do is, Bible says here that we should be strong and courageous. What did the Bible say? It says here in verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead this people to inherit the land I sow to their ancestors to give them. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. You know, we need to cultivate courage in our lives. 
We need to be strong in our lives. When difficulties come, don't wither out. Just be strong. Be rooted in the word of God. Joshua was 80 years old. And he was leading this people of Israel to the other side of the river Jordan. And I'm sure he must be scared. 80 years old, he has to cross the river. Moses, the guy who was always there with the children of Israel, was no more. Just imagine a leader who was there and God was with him and the miracles were happening through the life of Moses. Of course, God was doing everything. But this one big leader is just missing. God has taken him. And the second leader is here who wants to cross the river. Just imagine how much pressure Joshua must be going through. He was 80 years old. But God wanted Joshua to know that Moses was not the key person. But God was the key person. It is not the man that can give us victory. It is only God who can give us victory. Many a times we depend on human beings. Many a times we depend on a friend. We depend on the church. We depend on, you know, on the things of this world. But God is saying, listen, you depend on me. I am the one who gives you victory. Hallelujah. It is the Lord who gives us victory. There are three different times God is speaking to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. And he says to be strong and courageous. Three times he says to him, be strong and courageous, Joshua. Be strong and courageous because I am going to give you the victory. Hallelujah. Look at that verse 3. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Everywhere you go, I will give you that land. How many of you want the land? How many of you want to enter in the promised land that God has for you? And he says, you go ahead, don't stop. Go ahead and I will give you the land that you stand on. Today is a challenge for each and every one of us. How many of you want to say, God, I want to be strong and courageous. I'm not going to be frightened. I'm not going to be frightened of these big giants that will come before me. Look at David. David was not frightened. David said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut your hair and give to the birds of the air. That's why he received the victory. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. Be strong. Bible says in Timothy, 2 Timothy was 1 and 7, it says, For God gives us not the spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, of self. He's the one who gives the power. He's the one who gives us the spirit of power. He doesn't give us the spirit of fear in, in our lives, friends. Can somebody read Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2? Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. Who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Wow, what, what does the Bible say? He says that do not fear. Why? Because I have redeemed you. I say, I have summoned you by name. You are mine that's what the lord is telling us today that you are mine so why are you afraid why are you afraid of the situations around you you may be going through problems financial problems maybe sickness there may be problems in your job in your business but listen god is saying that you are mine i'm going to remove a solution for you I'm going to get you out from those things and place you in the promised land. The plentiful harvest that belongs to you, I'm going to give you. He has called you by name. And he says, you are mine. God commands Joshua to be courageous because those who he was leading needed him to stand with courage. Later on, if you read uh, Joshua chapter 1, 16, 18, you know, People were telling him, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. 
only be strong and courageous. People were telling him also, you know, you be strong and courageous. If you're strong and courageous, whatever you tell us to do, we will do. You know, people look at your courage. If you are a fearful person, then people will not have faith in you. They will not trust you. If you call them to do something, they will say, no, I don't think. But look at the children of Israel. They saw the courage. You know, they saw Joshua and they told Joshua, don't worry, we will do everything you want us to do. Only thing you have to be strong and courageous. God is asking us to be strong and courageous. Let's be courageous. Let's confront every issue that comes in our life when we go forward. Second thing, he says, don't make, don't forget to follow God's instruction. If you want to receive a plentiful harvest in your life, don't forget to do what God has asked you to do. Don't forget the instructions. Obey everything that the Lord has asked you to do. Another principle which, is, which will help you to move forward is take, you know, be obedient to God and to his word. Be obedient to him. In every situation, be obedient. Obedient in small things. Moses was dis, disobeyed God with small things. You know what he did? When God told him that you can touch the stick, the rod, to, this, uh, to get the water, what he did? He strike. A small disobedience did not allow him to enter the promised land. Small things can keep us away from the bigger things that God has for us. Don't let these small things keep you away from the presence of God. Keep you away from the promise that God has given for you and for me. We have to obey God totally and fully. I like what uh, what Bible talks about Caleb. Bible says that he wholly, wholly followed the Lord. He wholly followed the Lord. Till the age of 80, he wholly followed the Lord. And we as the children of God, I, I'm, I'm sure there are no much 80, 80 years old people here. We are all young. But I want to tell you, we need to follow God wholeheartedly. Obeying him every step that we take in our life. And that's the time you will see that fruitfulness in our lives. That's the time you will see the plentiful harvest that we can receive what God has for each and every one of us. God is looking for total obedience. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 and 8, he says, Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Be careful to obey everything that my servant Moses gave you, the laws that Moses gave. Do not turn to your right, neither to your left, that you may be successful in whatever you do. If you want to be successful in life, if you have, want to have that plentiful harvest in your life, then you obey the word of God. Obey what God has asked you to do. Obey every instruction. Do not do, disobey God. And Joshua knew it. When God told him, you need to obey, he said, yes, God, I'm going to obey. Sometimes we make a lot of excuses, you know, because of our sin. We make a lot of excuses. We don't obey God. But listen, God is saying, if you obey, then you will receive what you have for you. But if you disobey, then we will not receive what God has for us. David said in Psalms 119 verse 60, he says like this, I will hate, I will haste, and do not delay to obey your commands. If we are disobedient, then stop right now and ask for forgiveness. This is what David said. He said that I will haste and do not delay to obey your command. He says, I will make haste. I will not stop obeying your command. I will not delay to obey your command. Why? Because there is blessing when you obey his command. There is blessing when we obey his law. There is blessing when we obey his covenant. Are we obeying God's word, church? Third thing, if you want to receive or if you want to go ahead, 
to receive the promised land, then you need to get soaked in the word of God. Get soaked in the word of God. Bible says here, for so long God spoke to Moses face to face, but now he had given the word of God to Moses to give to his children of Israel. Going up in life needs getting soaked in the word of God. Word of God must be in our minds, in our hearts and in our mouths. We should not only hear the word of God, it should be set in our minds. It should be in our hearts. It should be in our mouth. Psalm 197 Bible says like this, Oh, how I love your word. I meditate it day and night. How many of us want the word of God to be in our hearts and in our minds? Somebody said, you know, empty mind is a devil's workshop, correct? But the mind filled with the word of God is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to fill this mind with the word of God. So that this mind will not think things which are not of God. We should always think good. We should always think according to the word of God. Get soaked in the word of God, my friends. Every day you say, God, I'm going to meditate on the word of God day and night. You want to see success in your life? God's word doesn't say that you have to work hard. God's word doesn't say that you have to do something else. He says meditate on the word of God day and night and God is going to make you successful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And turn to your neighbor and say meditate on the word of God day and night. Come on. All of you. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Fourth thing that the Lord wants Joshua to do is to consecrate himself. He says to his, uh, to his people and to Joshua, Joshua, before you enter the promised land, you need to clean yourself. Before you enter into the promised land that I'm going to give you, I want you to set yourself apart. Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, Joshua told his people, consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. The command that consecrate meant that we had to abstain from something. We should keep ourselves away from something. From things that is not of this world. Things of this world will make us corrupt. But things of God will make us holy. We need to consecrate ourselves. Even before we enter the promised land, you need to ask God, God, I want to be separated. And God wants you to be separated. He wants you to be set apart because he's got something better for you. He's got that the blessing of God is on the other side. He cannot, he doesn't want you to go as an unworthy person into this blessing. He doesn't want you to have something of God when you are not cleansed. Bible says that you need to be consecrating yourself. And God wants us today, church, to give up things in which are not bringing glory to him. If you want to see a, a blessing in our lives, we need to give up certain things in our life. What are the things that, that brings, uh, you know, brings dishonor to God to our lives? I don't know, you individually know, we all know ourselves better than anybody else and if you want to see that plentiful harvest in your life we need to consecrate ourselves and say God I want to be separated from the things of this world what are those things ask yourself a question what are the things that I need to be separated from is everything that I do give glory to God and if it is not giving glory to God and ask God forgive me Consecrate me. Wash me with your precious blood. God has called us as his own children, friends. He calls us as a chosen generation. He calls us as the royal priesthood. He has called 
us as a holy nation. He has called us as a special people. We are his children. And if we are his children, then he doesn't want us to have anything bad in us before even we come into the promised land. We need to avoid unworthy actions that would take us away from the presence of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Can somebody read? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Ah, it says, it's a spiritual act of worship. Think, therefore, I urge you, brethren, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. We need to ask God, or we need to search ourselves and, and ask ourselves, am I holy before God? Our God is a holy God. And if you need a, you need a plentiful harvest in your life, then you need to be holy. You need to consecrate yourself so that you can have what God has for you. And the fifth, fifth thing, that we need to move forward with God. We need to move forward into the promised land with the presence of God. Hallelujah. We need to move forward with the presence of God. If there is no presence of God in us, then we will not be able to move forward. Look at the Joshua. Joshua focused the attention of Israelites on the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant was the visible symbol of the presence of God in those days. Joshua chapter 3 verse 6, Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. God said to Joshua, take the Ark of the Covenant and go ahead of the people. And tell the priest, as soon as they enter into the Jordan, the Jordan is going to divide. You see the miracle, when the presence of God was with them, they saw this division of Jordan. When you have the presence of God within you, you will see every, every difficult situation just falling around. Because you are carrying the presence of God today. You don't have to carry Ark of the Covenant. You have carrying God himself in your life. And if you want to see a blessing of God over your life, if you want to see that plentiful harvest in your life, then carry the presence of God with you. Everywhere you go, wherever you go, and you will see your problems splitting into two. And there will be a way for you to enter into your promised land. Exodus chapter 33 verse 14 says, my presence will go with you. Look at that. He has promised us saying that my presence will go with you. Everything that you do, ask for God's presence to come with you. If you're starting your business, say, God, I need your presence to come with me. If you're starting a new job, say, God, I need your presence to come in my life. In the place that I work. In the job that I do, in my business, Lord, I need your presence. Because there's, when the presence of God is there, God will give us back to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 says, No one will be able to stand against you. No one will stand against you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. No one will stand against you. If there are people standing against you today, I want to tell you, carry the presence of God. You'll see, people will say, you have your way. You'll see the favor of God over your life when the presence of God is with you. God will work in your favor. Recently, you know, uh, on last Monday, we had some people who came down uh, from the electricity department and they said that you don't have electric uh, electricity how come you have electricity even if you have a generator you have to inform the electricity department and they did a survey of the whole hall and they took down the 
the how many kilowatts we have been using and they said you want to come and meet we thought that you know that we are going to they will charge us a big amount for not informing them about the electricity thing but look at this there is a presence of god in this church everyone who came here they went back and they called back saying that don't worry we will help you out within two days within two days they gave the electricity back You know, when you carry the presence of God, you will see God working on your, on your behalf. You may think, oh God, what is going to happen? Will they cut the electricity? Because we have not informed them about the generator and a lot of things, you know. So they, what, what, what will happen? But God says, when I am there, I will give you victory. Hallelujah. We need to carry the presence of God wherever we go. Bible says in Hebrews that I will never leave you, neither I will forsake you. He has promised, you know, there are so many promises in the word of God which tells us that he will never leave us. The problem with us is we leave him. The problem with us is we don't want his presence to come with us. We want his presence only when, when we need it. You know, we should not be matlabi, you know, whenever we want, we, we would take God with us. No, we need to take God every day in our lives and say, God, I need your presence to lead me in every day. Every day when you get up in the morning, say, God, I want you to lead me today. I need your presence in everything that I do today. Then you would see the blessing of God. Then you will see that your promised land you will receive. Then you will see that plentiful harvest that we are praying in 2022 to come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. How many of you want that plentiful harvest to be your portion? Hallelujah. Be fruit. If you want to be fruitful, be faithful. Let's go ahead. Let's not wait on the other side of the Jordan and say, God, 